Okay, welcome to what I think is the ninth world art session um, during lockdown. Um, of course, things easing now uh, somewhat, and um, hopefully we're all still staying safe while at the same time enjoying ourselves. Okay, um, today we're going to be doing a, um, a male lion's kind of head and um, part of the back as well on, on a blue sky to get a nice contrast. Um, so we're going to be needing uh, that usual bit of card, which can be part of a cereal box, an equivalent bit of card uh, of the same size, which again can be any bit of card. I've just used some white card because um, I have it to hand. A uh, pencil for a bit of drawing, brush, medium sized brush, um, some scissors because we'll be cutting out a stencil again, uh, a sponge, and so you can use a previous week's sponge and just renew it. Um, and then palette wise, we're going to need first palettes. This is probably a bit more paint than you need, uh, but some blue and some white. And second palette, I've used another bit of cereal box. It looks a bit messy. Um, so we've got brown, that is paint, um, black, white, and yellow. That's what we'll need for today. Okay, I think that's it. Let's give it a go. Okay, first thing we're going to do is do a bit of an outline of um, our lion's head onto the the second bit of card and we'll be cutting this out to again get the, the stencil which just helps us to get our background and makes everything neat and it means that we can be um, just playing around a little bit more with our outline before we go on to our main bit of card. Okay so I'm, I'm not wanting to go too far up to the top, I want to make sure I'm sort of about that far down from the top of the card and equally I don't want to go too far to the right, that's both from the point of view of composition but also um, to make sure that I'm, I'm sort of well contained within the card for the stencil that I'll be cutting out so I might make sure I sort of come only to perhaps about here um, on that right hand side. Okay, very welcome to just follow the outline that I'm doing here uh, but also welcome to do your own. So this is the top of the main, I'm just going to do it very roughly to start with. So sort of curving up to that top part there, I've decided that's very top of my lion's head. Okay, in the main, come down there and I'm going to just define a little bit where um, the mane becomes the head. So this will be one big outline and we'll re-outline it on our second bit of card, but there's no harm in doing a little bit more detail on this just so you know that you've got basically the right outline. Okay, come down like that. So our eyes, think about it, going to be coming at the diagonal there. We're going to try a diagonal on um, view of the, the lion's head, which is quite tricky. Side on would be much easier, and I had thought about doing side on, but I thought I found a, a nice photo of slightly sort of um, uh, an angled look of the, the face, and actually it's just much more interesting. So let's stretch ourselves and have a go at that. Okay, so the the nose will be angled at a, the same angle. So all your things, whatever they are, be they the eyes, where the ears would come out, the nose, the mouth, they'd all be angled at that same um, slope. So yeah, that's something to think about in the future when you're drawing. So the nose comes to perhaps there, and then part of the mouth coming down, and then in fact in. When it comes to it, we'll be, yeah, like I say, re-outlining this, but it helps to just do it a little bit at this stage. So make sure I've not... I think that's fine. Okay, so in... and down. This is now the mouth, sort of the chin of the line as well. Right, so that's going to be cutting up and cutting up. So just very roughly, I think something I see so often, especially with young people, but probably anyone who hasn't done that much art, is fussing over just little bits that really don't matter. And what you want to be getting initially is just the very, very rough impression of something. You don't want to fiddle at all 
until you've got the overall right impression of what you're doing, then you can go into your various places and and fiddle after that. But until you're happy with your basic outline, do not fiddle. Right, so I'm going to actually come down a little bit, do a little bit more like that. Okay, we're getting there with this. Okay, the mane will be coming around like that. I'm going to just come down from the chin. Okay, and then when it comes to it, we'll, we'll define this bit of the outline better on our second piece, but the body will, or the mane will, will sort of end around there and there, and we'll start to be going back towards the, the body itself. Okay, that's about right, I think, for our initial outline. It, it, there's no point at this stage in me going and doing more detail because I am just going to be cutting this out quite roughly and then um, redefining the details on the second bit of card. Okay. Right, so I'll just very quickly show you. I've just slightly more clearly defined my main outline and this is where I'm going to be now cutting along um, for the set. Okay, there we are. We've got our two pieces and actually in this case we only need this piece. Let's call it A and we can discard this piece. Okay, take your stencil and place it in the bottom left of your main bit of card. And we need to just hold that well in place. Right, I'm going to take initially I think just some of the blue and let's just start to get that around our stencil up towards the top of the, the card. This is, of course, the sky. Um, but we're sort of doing two in one while, while doing the sky. We're getting our main outline of the lion in there as well. OK, I'm going to take some of the, the white. And I think initially I'm going to start right down the very bottom because at the moment the white is as, as vibrant vibrantly white as it can be, but slowly but surely it will work its way back towards the blue, um, which is further back on the sponge. Okay, head all the way up to meet our blue at the top, and I'll just come up into that a little bit with the white, finish that toning, and then back down. With a lot of toning you kind of go back and forth somewhat um, to try and, so I'm going to, yeah, in fact I am going to do that, I'm going to come all the way back down again and that will just smooth out the tone nicely. Right, I reckon that works. Um, take a little bit more of that white and let's come into just behind the line there and we'll do the same thing, we'll work up towards the blue and then we'll probably yeah, we'll go up into it, and then I think we'll probably come back down again to bring a bit more of that blue back down, and it just um, smooths out the tone nicely. Right, yeah, I reckon that will do. Let's have a look. Yeah, that will do for now. Okay, that's all dry. Um, so now we want to come back into our lion's head outline and we want to redefine all the little bits of detail. Um, I'm going to start with just very roughly getting the outline first and this is how basically I think it's best to operate in terms of drawing to do things yeah, very roughly first and then define your details more afterwards. I've said that a few times I know but it's, um, it's probably worth repeating. Okay so that's the, the ear just very roughly where it goes. Okay, the main's going to be coming back there, so down to there. Yeah, I often switch between reference points just to make sure that my distances are right and my angles are right. And think, okay, is it right from the bottom and is it also right from the top? Just double check. Okay, so that bit of main's going to come back there. Okay, so from here, actually there is... I'm looking at my own photo reference and I guess you guys are going to just be looking at what I've been working on here so it's a bit more tricky for you um, but hopefully I'm able to sort of somewhat simplify the whole process of, of getting your outline. Okay, and the nose comes up into that space 
And actually, okay, so we're getting the first um, angle which strips across of where our eyes are. And so I'll be looking at my photo and thinking, okay, what angle are the eyes at? Are they straight across? Are they really sharply down? In this case, it's qu quite a, a sort of shallow slope, but sure enough, that gives me now the angle of the face. And I therefore want the same angle for the nose, and ultimately it will be the same kind of angle for the, for the mouth as well. Um, as we come down along. Okay, so let's not worry about the eyes anymore just for now. I'll, I will come back to that. Okay, this is the midline of my um, of the face, of the brow. Okay, let's come down to the nose. Okay, so it curves up a bit. Coming from there down at a, a sharper angle. Okay, and then together. And then down, right. Okay, now getting the outline of the mouth. This is the top part of the mouth. Down to around there. Um, okay. So again, there's going to be a tooth coming up into that area. And then the lower part of the mouth. meet there. I think that's about right. We'll just sort of double check on a lot of those details before we finish. Okay, the chin. Slightly more angular around there. Okay, it's probably time. It's always the sort of most nerve-wracking part to move to where the eyes are because the eyes quite simply are the most important part of any drawing you do of uh, a living creature. Um, because that's where the life of it is, it's where the character of it is. Um, so it's, it's the most important thing to give time and attention to. Uh, therefore, it's the most nerve-wracking part. Okay, I'm just going to double check where my eyes are going to be. So actually, I think they are under this line rather than sort of along it. So I'm going to just... That one, and often I'll I'll look at the photo and I think, okay, where does that align with both um, horizontally, let's say, and and vertically, or however you want to put it. So that eye actually aligns with this bit of the mouth, so I can do a very rough line coming up from that bit of the mouth, and I can say, right, that's where my eye is going to be. So again, don't worry about doing too much detail in it just yet. We're just going to sort of roughly outline it. Um, okay. There's more of the brow that comes up there. Um, and there's going to be a, a lighter area underneath the eye there. So I'm just going to very roughly um, outline where that's, that's going to be. Okay, we'll come across now to this eye. And this eye, we need to keep it in alignment with that one. Um, and it comes out from where the, the nose is coming um, out from that part of the face. Okay, is that about right? It seems about right. It's worth just double checking. Okay, am I still in alignment with that eye? Because that's what I need to be. Okay, that's about right. Okay, we'll just do a tiny bit more. Um, let's give me another tooth coming up there. Uh, definition on the main. So I've got a shadow that will be coming down there. This comes up. We've got two main layers to the main. This is what I've seen. Lines. So a bit that's closer to the face. And then the second main layer, which is further away from the face. Just roughly outline that. Okay. And then this bit that comes, I'll go back to probably around there. And that area will be very deep, dark shadow. Okay, so there's going to be also a deep, dark shadow behind the ear. Up. Okay. So these are all now going to be layers of where the hairs kind of come down and it'll be darker there and it'll be lighter up there. Okay, and lastly, darker there and I've got to think, so the brow comes up, cuts out like that. So there'll be a line showing again um, that sort of middle stretch of the head. So we've got, yeah, middle stretch of the head being defined by certain lines, certain deeper creases 
including that part of the nose that comes down. Okay, that's good for the outline. Okay, I just want to give you guys an idea of what we're going to be doing now in terms of our approach um, and the tones that we'll be putting into our line to make it look 3D and realistic. So I always like to start with um, a sort of middle tone as my background colour and that's what we've basically got by having used this cereal box. We've got our middle tone, I'd say that's right in the middle uh, between the lightest and the darkest that we're going to be doing into this. Um, the next thing we're going to do is to step a bit towards a darker tone um, for some shadows and, and darker parts of the lion's uh, face. And then we'll go to the deepest, darkest tones after that, so the really deep shadows. If you're going to do a more detailed painting, of course, there'd be more of a continuum and you'd step to sort of 3.5 and then 4 and then 4.5. But I think we're going to keep it quite simple and go to 4 and then 5 with this. And then for my own approach to painting, I'd then go in the other direction. I'd step firstly away from the middle a bit to towards a lighter tone with, let's say, number two, which will be parts of the face around here and a few parts of the main. And then we'd finish up with um, the brightest highlights. And because that's the light that shines on top of something, really that's what we need to do last. Um, whereas if you're doing the shadows last, something about it wouldn't quite work. Okay, so we're gonna start by stepping towards this direction and we're gonna do um, a slightly deeper tone now into a few areas. Okay, right, I've got my middle-sized brush, I've got my water. First things first, I'm gonna just water down my brown a little bit. Um, otherwise it's too thick, too sticky. So I'm gonna add it might even be sort of a 50-50 mix of, of water and paint. And just make sure that that's well mixed, you've got an even consistency, otherwise you'll get um, blobs of your paint appearing in parts of the line. Okay, that's probably about right. Um, might want to just take off a bit of the excess there. Again, so I make sure I'm not getting those blobs. Right. Okay, first things first. I'm going to do some of the smaller details. So I'm going to just do um, the outline of the eyes. I'm checking back on my, my photo to make sure I'm doing the right things. Okay, I think I can reasonably near enough fill those in, maybe leaving just a little bit at the bottom there. Let's go across to the right. We'll do the same there. Don't worry about exact precision here. That's one of my top tips would be um, just get the impression of something. If you're starting out with painting, your main objective is to get the impression of something and not fuss over little details. And um, you might know that my main work is, is mural painting. And something that I love about it is that there isn't really opportunity to fuss over details. You, you have to just sort of get on with it because it's all about the bigger picture. And um, that's now my approach to just any painting, really, if, even if I'm painting on a much smaller scale. Um, it's all about, for me now, the bigger picture, the, the overall impression of that thing. Um, okay, so, get the line under the, the eye there, head back. We're doing some of the smaller details here first, um, but as we go on with this tone, we'll, we'll start to do some bigger areas. But I thought we'd just focus on yeah, these smaller little details first. Okay, normally in the nose there'd be a little bit of pink and red, but I think we're just going to stick to the brown for today to just keep it simple. Okay, I will leave that tooth. Um, so I'm just going to do... So that there is, is one of the lion's teeth. I'm just going to leave that. Um, as the the middle tone, so as a three, let's call it. And then there's another tooth coming up there. I'm going to leave that as a three as well. And then the rest, this is the rest of the mouse being blocked in as a four. Right, okay. Okay, so a few more slightly fiddly bits, fiddly bits around the eye. We come up and just outline that area, which comes up towards the eye, behind the eye, a little bit over the eye. Um, okay, so that's actually a tiny bit of the mane coming behind that line of the, the face there. 
So we just want to capture that. For some of you, for this, you might want to be using a, a thinner, more detailed brush. For me, because I use these flattened brushes, I've got used to just twisting them and, and using that thinner edge um, to get my thinner, more detailed lines, but it's not necessarily easy straight away to be doing that. So I would say that if you want to use a thinner brush for the, that, this part, that would be, yeah, no bad idea. Right, we're almost at the point now of being able to do a few slightly bigger areas with this. So I think for the first one, I'm going to come up there and just in, and then this one, I'll take that to a four underneath the eye, down to around there. Okay, and equally. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to decide what's a three, what's a four. Um, and especially because you're, you're factoring in both shadows and the actual tone of the lion. So it's not as simple as just looking for where the shadows are. You're really trying to just pick out all the, just the tone and, and clear your mind to just focus on tone. Right, this whole area here is, is either shadow or darker tone, so we're going to just do all of that with our four. I need a bit more water. Okay, and a bit more paint. Again, roughly 50-50 there. Okay, that's about right for the face, um, for taking it to the, 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 um, that level of tone. Okay, so I'm going to start doing a few bits of the mane now. Let's do the ear comes up, and then that bit's in shadow. One of the tricky bits, I'd say, the tricky things, is deciding where to leave that middle tone, so just the colour of the card. Um, and, yeah, so actually quite a lot of this is at that middle tone level, where I can just leave the card to do its work and not worry about putting any more tone or colour on because it's roughly the colour of a line, it's close enough again, it's that sort of approximation that's probably fine. Okay, right, um, having a look at my picture and actually there's a big area there that's all in shadow because the light's coming from the right, I'd say it's coming from top right, and so you can be thinking about that a little bit um, with other pictures you do. And, Always, yeah, always really useful to think where's your light coming from, therefore, where are your shadows? And I, I, if I have the choice in the matter, I often have the light coming from top right because it just feels somehow natural for that to be the case. Top left is also fine. But yeah, diagonally down works really well because you get more interesting shadows upon something as opposed to the light coming straight from the top or straight from the side, um, somehow it allows something to be more 3D. Right, so I'm just, I'm leaving that top part, that's going to stay as the, um, the middle tone, so number three, a little bit under the chin that's in, in deeper shadow. Okay, and then our second layer of the main, just do some nice flicks of your brush and use your brush to get the the hairs of the mane. I often see people just randomly shading in any direction, but you want to look really closely at the direction of the hairs if you're doing um, an animal or a bird, the direction of the feathers, and replicate that with the direction of your brush strokes. Um, and then, hey presto, you've got your, um, your texture. Okay, there's a sort of a third layer, I guess, for this um, further back bit of main here, and actually a few shadows come out from that, so it's a bit deeper, a bit darker. Okay, we're, we're getting there with this, with this level. Okay, I've now got to think along the back, um, so I think there'd be shadow about that far back from the main there. I'm making this up a little bit actually because the photo I've got doesn't quite show me this particular aspect. I'm going to say that the... Mm, actually we'll, we'll make that as if that's part of the leg coming back, which um, would be around there. 
but then I'm going to give a little bit of light into that area and then otherwise shade in that area coming up towards the main and we'll, we'll better define that um, with our deeper tones. Okay, that I think is it for um, number four. And we're now going to go to number five and do the deeper stuff. Okay, we're now going to work with basically pure black, but we're going to be kind to ourselves and water it down a bit, which softens the black and means that it's not as harsh and we can be a little bit more relaxed about our use of it. Um, I very, very rarely use the paint absolutely neat because it's so harsh and very rarely, maybe with your absolute deepest shadows and your absolute brightest highlights, you're using the paint neat, but otherwise a little bit of water um, makes all the difference to just make the paint a bit more forgiving um, and probably closer to the tone that you want it to be. Okay, I think that's about right. Again, I'm going to do the, the smaller details first, so let's go back into the eyes. And obviously with this, we're not going over everything that we've done with the brown. We're only doing a few bits. And try and define the, the pupil there. So again, you might want to be using um, a smaller, neater brush at this stage. Come across to this eye. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about right for all of that. Okay, I'll come down. I think now there's very little that's properly black into the shadows here. I might water down the black a little bit more and just a few little touches in a sec, um, but very little really. The, the brown's done a lot of the work for us. Okay, come down to the mouth. Go around the tooth again there. Um, and this one, okay, and now we've got a bit coming up there, and then it's lighter underneath, and then darker again at the bottom. Come up, and I'll just, I think that's all dark there. Okay, right, I'm going to just water down the black a bit more. I don't know if you can see this at the edge of the, the view, so it's really quite watered down. And I'm going to be, I'm going to deviate from what I've said, and I'm basically going to do a, a four and a half in a few places. So let's just test. Always test. Never go, you know, you don't have to commit just a tiny bit. Is that right? Is it not? So I'm going to do a 4.5 long under the eye there. I'm going to do a bit of 4.5 there and down to there. And then equally a bit of 4.5. So this is just basically really watered down black paint. I've not worried about um, mixing an exact colour and that's what you have as an option. You don't have to mix the exact colour or tone of something. You can water down what you've already got to create um, a different tone. Okay, I think that's it for 4.5 and uh, yeah, I've been a bit naughty in doing that because we're going to keep it simple, but I think those areas needed just a little bit of that 4.5. So I'm going to go back to my 5 now, back to my deeper, darker tones. Right, there's a very little bit here, that's possibly too dark, at that darker level. Get back into that and just get that a bit darker still, equally that. Okay, that part of the ear is very dark. Beneath uh, sorry, behind the ear there is, is also our five. And that makes the ear really stand out, makes it more 3D. Okay, and then just a few brush strokes probably into our, um, the brown paint that we've done, but not all the way up. So just a little way up into a few of them. You'll be able to hear I've got Lord of the Rings in the background. It just often suits me to have Lord of the Rings music, or something equivalent as my, my background music. Puts me in the right relaxed frame of mind. Okay, a little bit again, coming down here, but not much. Don't go all the way up into your, your brown. Okay. And that area there is a bit darker, I think. Front, right, we're, 
we're getting there. I think that's probably about as much as we want to do because we just we're we're fussing otherwise. And this is this is a sketch. Um, we're not looking for a really detailed finished piece. So I think apart from just outlining that bit of the nose, let's just get that a bit more clearly defined. Um, okay, one last little thing actually. There's these whisker spots that come along. That's where the whiskers come out from. I guess effectively the cheek of the lion. So let's just get a few of those. But I reckon that's about it. Okay. okay. We're now going to move in the other direction. We're going to go from three, so just our, our cardboard colour, and we're going to go to two. Um, I'm mixing up here a little bit of the yellow with some of the white and then it's up to you. I would say mix in just a teeny touch of the brown because we want to dull the yellow. We don't want this to be like a sort of a child's version of a lion um, with bright yellow, as lions aren't. Um, you equally could have mixed in just a little touch of the black and that would have done the job as well. But let's go with this and as ever, let's just have a bit of a go and see how it's looking and we can always adjust what we've done. Okay, so I think, hmm, start with the eyes again, but there's very little, maybe just a little bit above the eye there, above the eye there. A lot of what's around the eye, I'd say, is just at that three, or a few bits are at one with our brightest highlights, so I'm, I'm not there yet. Okay, I'll come down, there's a few, few of these areas and just brighten up a few bits. Okay, that bit of the the brow. I'm going to mix in a bit more white. I think I need to take my level two tone just to being a little bit brighter. Okay, and then equally along here. And a little bit above the eye there. Possibly just a few bits of the mane which are coming out from the eye, but that's that's about right, that's about enough. Okay, along the top of the nose, because that will be catching the light pretty decently. And then this bit of the top, just above the, the nose itself. Okay, under the eye, let's do a little bit of that area, but not too much. Okay, and then for this, actually a lot of this is more white, so we're going to just wait for that. Just do a little bit with the with this tone. Okay, underneath again, that's white, so I'm going to be leaving that for now. Um, so really we're looking at doing just bits of the mane now. Mix up some more. Mixing a little bit more of that brown again just to dull it. Okay, so now let's do some parts of the mane. Again, we don't want to remove all of our mid tone. If you want to, you can come up into the blue just a bit with a few of your lines just to break that up a little bit. Again, it's where you'd possibly want a slightly more. Um, thin and precise brush, but never mind. Okay, Bring a few of these hairs to a slightly greater highlight, equally here. Down to around there, leave that. Okay, and then, yeah, so you can see it doesn't take much. In so many cases, it's just little touches that do the job. And you can be quite quick, once you've got an idea of what your direction of brushstroke is, then you can sort of relax into it and, and go for it. So I'm leaving that at level three under the chin because there's a shadow coming down along that line. Okay, we're pretty much there with this, I think. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit quite loosely with the brush back across the body. Just think about where the light's hitting and where it's not. Maybe a little bit along that bit there, but 
I think that's probably about right. Okay, I think, he says as he does a little bit more painting, um, I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so to finish with, we're now moving all the way to one with our brightest highlights. Um, this is where I think for a lot of you, it'd be good to have a thinner brush or um, like a Posca pen or something just to do these tiny little highlights. I'm going to use just the very corner of my brush. So if you have a decent defined corner of your brush, that's great. If not, find something that allows you to do those little highlights because they make all the difference to get those really nicely defined on the eye. And so they're kind of top right within the eye, just up and right from your pupil. Okay. So lions have these lovely bright bits under their eyes as well, which make the eyes stand out even more. I don't know exactly what their function is. There'd be people out there who'd be able to tell me, but my guess is it is to bounce more light up into the eye so they can see more clearly. But that's just a guess. Okay, right. So this, I'm having a bit of trouble getting the right amount of water so that you can see there, too much water in that bit of paint, but just wiped it off. Okay, white coming along just mostly the front part of this bit of the cheek. So let's just do that and we'll leave that there, I think. Yep. And across here, yeah, again, too much water. I'm just going to take off that water. Okay, yeah, with the white, you probably want less water in it than you've had for your other um, tones and your other bits of painting because we want it to stand out. We want this to now be the bright highlights. Get a bit of texture into there if we can, rather than just blocking it in. Come up, up into our brown just a little bit to show that that's, um, that same texture continues up into there. Okay, very few bits of highlight along the um, the rest of the face, but just yeah, a few little bits to show where the edges are. So that's the edge of that half of the face coming up there. I'll just do a tiny bit coming out from these bits. Um, okay, I think that will do. A little bit brighter there, just on that bit of the nose. Okay. Let's leave that there. Right, and now just a few highlights, but not many at all at the top part, the top edges of each, let's say, section of mane. So that was a section there, which I've defined by the shadow. This is another section, which I've defined by the shadow. Okay, maybe just a tiny bit at the very top there. By here, we're probably not getting those brightest highlights, but maybe that bit there has a little bit of the bright highlight. Any of the ear, basically not any of the ear, but a little bit of this part of the, ma uh, the mane. And then a few little bits just to show the shape of this part of the mane, but just a very little bit there. Perhaps this bit underneath is catching a bit of light as well. We'll always be thinking where where would the light fall and where would it not fall? Where would it fall at its brightest? And try and be quite um, restrained with your highlights. Because otherwise I, it just won't look as realistic in 3D as you probably want it to look. Okay, this is okay. This is basically a little bit of effectively dry brushing that I'm doing. So it's just a bit of the paint just to get a bit more light coming up into this part of the body. And that there. Right, I think I'm basically there. I'm just going to do a few final highlights again, but now with pure white. So I want to re re-highlight these bits under the eyes because they really are very bright. Tiny bit more along there. Tiny bit more along there. In this case, often I would then go and do 
for example, some whiskers, but they'll be so fine on this line at this scale that I think we just don't need to worry about them. Um, it would be a very easy way to ruin what we've done. Um, you know, for the level of detail we've gone to, we don't need to do such a thing. So let's just not worry about whiskers on this occasion. Let's get that very top line of the lion's mane. That's where the light will be shining the brightest. Okay. I reckon that's that's absolutely fine. This is a sketch of a lion. Um, cool. Right. As ever, I'd love to see um, what you guys have come up with for this. And um, please do send me your results either to uh, my um, email, which you can access through my website, which is rorymccannmurals.com, and send me a message there. Um, or on Facebook, which is where I have sort of my main presence and put um, most of my postings which is Rory McCann murals on Facebook. Um, so yeah, please do show me what you've, you've done. And um, my thought is to perhaps keep doing these workshops, um, or these tutorials, maybe once a month and start to make it a, a subscribed thing. But I, I want to do a few more still um, just for, for free to build up my own experience and for everyone to have something to do during lockdown. Okay, but I hope you're all keeping very well. And yeah, really can't wait to see what you've come up with for this.